محبت حسن عسکری سے اگر کی محبت حسن عسکری سے سمجھ لے کہ تو مل گیا زندگی سے اگر کی محبت حسن عسکری سے اگر کی محبت حسن عسکری تجھ کو ضرورت نہیں پھر کسی سر کی تجھ کو ضرورت کبھی مانگ کر دیکھ بنے بلی سے اگر کی محبت حسن عسکری سے اگر کی محبت حسن عسکری سے
سَنَفْرُغُ لَكُمْ أَيُّهَا الثَّقَلَاتِ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تمام مؤمنين کو ولادة امام حسن علیہ السلام علیہ السلام کی بہت بہت مبارک ہو اور سب سے پہلے شکریہ دا کرنا چاہتا ہوں محمد بھائی سے جو مجھے مجھے ایسا گناہگار کو پھر سے ایک موقع دیا یہ جو پلیٹ فارم ہے ہوئے زمام مہدی کا جشن پر آ کر آپ کے سامنے منقبت پیش کرنے کے لیے انشاءاللہ تو سب سے پہلے دعا بھی یہ کرتے ہیں کہ خدا اپنی بارگاہ میں ہماری سب کی عمال و عبادت قبول فرمائے میرے پہلے جو جو پڑھے ہیں ماشاءاللہ اور جو میرے بعد بھی پڑھیں گے انشاءاللہ سب کی عمال خدا اپنی بارگاہ میں قبول فرمائے اور دعا کرتے ہیں کہ بی 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 اے سب ہماری پرسا اور جو جو منقبت خانی جو کر رہے ہیں وہ قبول کریں اور ہمیں اور بھی عطا کریں انشاءاللہ انشاءاللہ بس ہمارے لئے یہ خیر ہو انشاءاللہ انشاءاللہ بر محمد و علی محمد صلوات اللہم صلی علی محمد و علی محمد و علی نہ خسروی کے لیے ہے نہ فسری کے لیے نہ خسروی کے لیے ہے نہ فسری زبان واقف ہے بس مد ہے اسکری کے لیے اگر نہ ملتی انہیں نور اسکری کی زکاة اگر نہ ملتی ترستے چاند ستارے کی روشنی کے لیے ترستے چاند ستارے کی روشنی کے لیے اور گرایا جنہوں نے مولا گرایا آپ کا روزہ جنہوں نے مولا شکار پہلے بنیں گے وہ آخری کے لیے شکار پہلے بنیں گے وہ آخری کے لیے اور کہا یہ دار پہ می سمنے کیسے کیسے رک زباں ملی ہے مجھے جب علی علی کے لیے زباں ملی ہے مجھے جب علی علی زبان وقف ہے بس مد ہے اسکری کے لیے پر محمد وآل محمد صلوات 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى فرجهم ایک منقبت مولا ظہور امام زمانہ حجر اللہ تعالیٰ فرجہ شریف کی شان میں کہ موجزہ ایک یہ بھی ہوگا آپ کے آنے کے بعد موجزہ ایک یہ کے آنے کے بعد دھوپ دھوپ بل جائے گی سایا آپ کے آنے کے بعد آپ کے آنے سے پہلے موت ہے موت ہے یہ زندگی زندگی خود ہوگی زندہ آپ کے آنے کے بعد زندگی خود ہوگی زندہ آپ کے آنے کے بعد اور حسن پر یوسف کے جب وہ آج تک حیران ہے حسن پر یوسف کے جب وہ آج تک حیران ہے مر ہی جائے گی کے آنے کے بعد مر ہی جائے گی زلیخا آپ کے آنے کے بعد اور خود ہی ہو جاؤں گا حاضر آپ کے دربار میں آپ کے دربار میں میں نہ لوں گا اس تیخارا آپ کے آنے کے بعد میں نہ لوں گا اس تیخارا آپ کے آنے کے بعد کون روکے گا بھلا تعمیر کرنے سے ہمیں کون روکے گا بھلا تعمیر کرنے سے ہمیں فاطمہ زہرہ کا روزہ آپ کے آنے کے بعد فاطمہ زہرہ کا روزہ آپ کے آنے کے بعد کتنی باتیں مد ہے حیدر کی ابھی سینے میں ہے کتنی باتیں مد ہے حیدر کی ابھی سینے میں ہے میں جنہیں ظاہر کروں گا آپ کے آنے کے بعد میں جنہیں ظاہر کروں گا آپ کے آنے کے بعد وہ نمازی وہ نسیری اور وہ ہے ماتمی وہ نمازی وہ نسیری اور وہ ہے ماتمی ختم ہوگا بس یہ جھگڑا آپ کے 
आने के बाद खत्म होगा बस ये झगड़ा आपके आने के बाद आपका दरबार शायर सब तक को कहे काश मिल जाए ये रुतबा आपके आने के बाद मौजाइक ये भी होगा आपके आने के बाद محمد محمد پر اللهم محمد محمد آخر میں جو وقت بچا ہے بیوی فاطمہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا ایک منقب دل چاہ رہا میں آپ کے سامنے پیش کروں اور جناب مظہر آبدی نے کلام لکھا ہے تو ان شاء اللہ غور ادیر کر جی کیجیے گا ان شاء اللہ کہ تیری کائنات مولا نہ لباس کن پہنتی گر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی گر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی تیری کائنات مولا نہ لباس کن پہنتی گر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی گر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی کبھی بز میں دو جہاں میں نہ کی بات چلتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی تیری لب یلد کی باتیں کوئی مانتا بھی کیسے تیری لا لا کی حرمت کوئی جانتا بھی کیسے جو بنائی تو نے دنیا تجھے کبریا نہ کہتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی یہ کلام پاک سارا ہے من قبت اسی کی کرتا ہے ذکر اس کا خود سورا نسا بھی تفسیر حل عطا کی لفظوں میں کیسے ڈھلتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی اور تو نے ہی تو کہا تھا ایک روز مصطفیٰ سے تخلیق دو جہاں ہے منصوب سیدا سے میں کچھ نہیں بناتا میں کچھ نہیں بناتا ہاں نسل میں تمہاری گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی تیری کائنات مولا نہ لباس کن پہنتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی یہ چاند اور ستارے یہ آسمان یہ دھرتی یہ سل سبیل کوسر جاگیر ہے اسی کی کونو مکان پہ تیرے کونو مکان پہ تیرے لاوار سی برستی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی تیری کائنات مولا نہ لباس کن پہنتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی اس در جاک بی بی دیکھی نہیں کوئی بھی دنیا کے سامنے ہے قرآن کی گواہی تطہیر کی آیت کس کے لیے اترتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی اور آخر میں وقت کا کہ دہلی سے پنجتن سے نسبت ہوئی ہے جب سے مشہور ہو رہے ہیں میرے کلام سارے یوں مظہر بی کو شہرت کبھی نہ ملتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی گھر فاطمہ نہ ہوتی پر محمد والے محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم محمد والے محمد واجل فرض اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آلہ الطیبین الطاہرین اللہم صلی اللہ علی محمد وآل محمد 
ولعنت الدائم على اعدائهم اجمعين من الاولين والاخرين الى قيام يوم الدين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي First of all congratulations to all of you on the birth anniversary of uh, our 11th Imam Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salam the father of uh, Imam of our time, Imam al-Zaman, Ajrallahu Ta'ala, Farajahu Sharif. May Allah hasten the reappearance of Imam al-Zaman al-Mahdi, Ajrallahu Ta'ala, Farajahu Sharif. Imam Hassan al-Askari's wisdom, Imam Hassan al-Askari's faith, Imam Hassan al-Askari's knowledge, even in his childhood, and he was not an Imam, he was astonishing, he was amazing. In Imam child, once a man saw Imam, and when Imam was a kid, he didn't know that this man is the son of our 10th Imam. So he saw a child crying, and then there were other kids there playing with the toys. The man comes and says, don't cry, I'm going to buy a toy for you but Imam says no we have not been created for playing the man was astonished and said for what we have been created Imam said for knowledge and worship the man asked shockingly where have you got this from where is this coming from the Imam said from the words of Quran in Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says did you think we had created you in vain? The man was shocked. This child knows the purpose of creation of man at this age when the elders are wasting their time, living a life which is meaningless, living a life which is purposeless, which has no goal, which has no objective. So our Imams, even in their childhood, used to be the manifestation of the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They used to be the manifestation of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Asma'ullah. They said themselves, Nahnu wallahi al Asma'ul Husna. So an Imam, no matter at what age, says something we should value those pearls of wisdom and try to implement it in our lives. But if an Imam tells you something at his deathbed and says that this is his last will, it should be valued the most because these words of wisdom are the crust of his life. <coughs> any wise person's last will, any intellectual's last will, any scholar's last will, any jurist merges last will should be given importance. But if it is the last will of Imam, if it is the last will of the infallible, if it is the last will of the Ma'soom, its value is unmatchable. Imam Hassan Laskari, in his last will to his Shias, Imam, in his last will, is talking to his Shias and he is saying, My last will to all of you is to be wary of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to adopt taqwa, because taqwa defines your status. Taqwa defines your position in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah says in Quran, the most noble among you in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is the most wary of Allah. So you being Arab, you being Persian, you being from West, you being from East, you being from Quraysh, you being from such and such country or such and such city or place, or you getting born in such and such family have no value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if there is no taqwa. These things come later. First is the taqwa. The only merit is taqwa. The only thing that has importance 
is taqwa. So taqwa is a state, which is amalgamation of many qualities, which is amalgamation of many attributes. And Imam Ali salam in Nahz al balagha tells us, what are the qualities which leads a person to achieve the state of taqwa? To achieve the state of God weariness. Imam says, number one, their speech is to the point. A person who is muttaqi, he talks to the point. He talks when it is required. He does not talk uselessly. He does not ha talk meaninglessly, purposelessly. Because if you start talking purposelessly, because you're trying to convince someone, because you're trying to have an influence on some other person, and you talk and talk a lot, then there's a possibility of lying being part of your speech. Then there's a possibility of backbiting becoming part of your speech. Then there's a possibility of allegation being part of your speech. There's a possibility of self-admiration because you want to sell yourself, because you want to impress the other person. Then there are times when you self-admire yourself. There's a possibility of pride, of takabbur. There's a possibility of gossiping. All of these possibilities are there when you don't talk to the point, when you talk a lot, and these all are sins. Some are ethically sinful and some are lawfully sinful. So Imam says the first thing is that that person should talk to the point. Number two is he should dress moderately. Their dress is moderate, Imam says. The person who is muttaqi, his dress is moderate. He is not wearing fancy clothes, neither that, and nor is wearing torn, poor clothes. No. Islam does not want mu'mineen to wear poor clothes, to look poor, or to wear torn clothes. No. Islam wants mu'mineen and mu'minan to wear reasonable, comfortable clothes which are which look nice but wearing fancy too much fancy clothes wearing too much expensive clothes like nowadays there is a race of wearing branded clothes this is what is condemnable imam is saying a muttaqi a muttaqi person's dress is what it is moderate and then their gait is humble the way they walk is humble there is no pride in their walk when they walk, it is shown that this is a walk of a mu'min, this is a mu'min, this is a muttaqi, this is someone who is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four, Imam says, Imam Ali alayhi salam is telling us what the qualities, the attributes of a muttaqi. Number four, they keep their eyes close to what Allah has made unlawful for them. Imam did not say that they do not go close to unlawful. They should not go close to unlawful. Imam said what? Imam is telling us in Nahz al-Balagha, and this is very important, it's coming from Nahz al-Balagha. Imam is saying that they keep their eyes closed to what Allah has made unlawful for them. So there could be a temptation there could be a possibility of uh, uh, attempting that unlawful. The possibility as in the access to unlawful act is there. So sometimes you don't have access to some unlawful act and you say, I have not done it all my life. I have not performed this unlawful act. This is one thing. The second thing is, which is, which has more value. The access is there. Or maybe there's there some temptation, but you closed your eyes because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it unlawful. They keep their eyes closed to what Allah has made unlawful. They do not go towards it. Their wish is what has Allah has wished for. So that's why they never go near to such acts. And then Imam says they put their ears to what knowledge is beneficial for them. 
So they look for knowledge. They look for the teachings of Ahl al-Bayt Wherever they see there is some lectures, there is a seminar, there is some talk, there is something that is beneficial for them, for their a'mal, for their actions, they put their ears towards them. They try to listen to it. They try to act upon it. So this is the main cause. So in the first three points, Imam Ali salam is talking about the zawahir, the exterior of a person. Imam said that uh, his, his speech should be to the point. Number two, Imam said that uh, his dress should be moderate. Number three, his gait should be humble. These are the zawahir, the exterior. How would his speech be to the point? How would his dress be a moderate? How would his gait be simple? How would he close his eyes from what Allah has made unlawful? How? When he put his ears to what knowledge is beneficial for him. When he listens to the knowledge, if he has the knowledge, if he has the ma'rifat, only then he's going to act upon these things. First, there has to be knowledge of what is unlawful and what is lawful. And then Imam says the sixth quality is they remain in times of trials as they have been in times of comfort. For them, it does not matter whether this is a time of comfort or this is a time of trial. There is no difference in their salat, psalm, in their actions, in their ibadat, in their worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether they have billions and millions and billions of dollars or they have nothing. Or they are facing through some trials and tribulations and very troublesome time. It does not matter for them. Imam Hussain al-Islam. We don't have to remind you what Imam Hussain السلام, went through before Muharram, in the months of Muharram, and on the day of Ashur, what he went through. But was there any difference in his Salat? Was there any difference in his Ibadat? Sayyida Zainab Salamullah alayha, what she went through on the, on the land of uh, Karbala, what she went through in Syria, in Kufa, on the streets of Kufa in Syria for two months. But was there any complaint she made? The only thing she said was, Ma ra'aytu illa jamila. I did not see anything but beauty. There was no difference in her Iman. There was no difference in her faith. There was no difference in her A'mal, in her actions, in her closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because she knew it's a test. This time is a test and it's going to pass. All she has to do is to be patient because there will come a time when all of this will go away. And then Imam says the next quality a muttaqi should have is that there should be pleasure in guidance. He should take pleasure in guiding people. Guiding people should be a source of pleasure for them. Unfortunately, especially in the West, we see that there are people who try to keep it to themselves. They don't try to influence other people. They don't try to guide other people. They say that it's my business. It's uh, religion is my personal identity. Religion is my personal matter. So we don't have to guide. No, we are not saying that you should try to force your religion to other people. We are not saying that you should try to force it or try to be forceful but there should be guidance you should talk to other people friendly in friendly manner you should talk to other people in a, a brotherly manner so the guidance should be there especially those uh, about whom you care so guidance is there the factor of guidance is there in uh, muttaqin and then imam says that his hope is simple he does not hope for things that uh, has to do with dunya. His hopes are very simple. The list of his hopes is very simple. He keeps it simple. He does not have hub with dunya, the love for this dunya. Those who have love for this dunya, their list of hopes is long. 
So if you are someone who's a follower of Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam, if you are someone who's follower of Imam Ali alayhisalam, you keep your hope simple. Why? Because you know this life is a journey and it's going to pass away in 40, 50 years. My real life will start after this life, after this world. That's when I should uh, hope for the things. And then in the last Imam says, it's a long list of the qualities I have chosen few of them the last important one is imam says his anger is suppressed emotional intelligence is something that is very important given a lot of importance these days imam is pointing towards this point his anger is suppressed imam did not say that he does not get angry no a man gets angry but he suppresses his anger this is his quality. This is the quality of uh, a muttaqi because he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want me to be angry because Imam has forbidden me to be angry. That's why he suppresses his angers. He recites salawat, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, or he makes wuzu or does not and does not show his anger. So these are the qualities of a of a muttaqi if someone wants to be a muttaqi if someone wants to listen to the wasiyat the last will of imam hassan al-askari alayhi salam he should adopt these qualities at least he should try to adopt these attributes imam hassan al-askari says oh seekum bi my last will for you is to be wary of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then imam says wal warai wara also means uh, fearing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because imam says awsikum bi taqwa allah wal warai fi dinikum and fear in your religion so what is the difference between if uh, taqwa also means weariness god weariness and wara also means god weariness what is the difference between taqwa and wara Scholars say taqwa is doing what has been commanded and refraining from what has been made unlawful in order to act upon what has been made lawful and refrain from what has been made unlawful. You have to know that what are the things that are unlawful and what are the things that are lawful by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to have the ma'rifat of these things. You have to have the knowledge of these things. Only then you can act upon it. But let's say there are hundreds of things that are obligatory on you and then there are hundreds of things which are unlawful for you. Let's, for example, let's say. Now you have certainty of 80% of the things which are lawful for you and 80% of the things which are unlawful for you. And you are uncertain, you have doubt about 20% of them, the ones which are lawful and the ones which are unlawful. Alvara is, a taqwa is what first? Taqwa is to act what is lawful 80% about which you have yaqeen, 80% about which you have certainty to act on those 80% of the laws is taqwa. But about which you have doubt, uncertainty, you do not have enough knowledge, but there is a possibility that this could be lawful, then you act upon it just because there's a possibility of being doubtful lawful and if there's a possibility of something being unlawful if there's just a doubt you stay away from this thing this is called wara shubhat you stay away from shubhat when you reach to the level of wara then anything that could be lawful you act upon it anything that could be unlawful you stay away from those things and uh, one of the ways of being muttaqi, one of the ways is of adopting wara, is to act upon the mustahabbat. First of all, for that you have to know what are the mustahabbat. And then to stay away from the makruha. So Imam says, O seekum bi taqwa Allah, wal wara'i fi And then Imam says, Imam Hassan Askari says, 
والاجتهاد لله do hard work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put effort for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of the humans have limited energy level they can put efforts in a limited way every day when we wake up from our sleep let's just say there are 10 bars of energy level we have every day now the question is how do you utilize these bars of energy how do you utilize it you can utilize it in sins you can utilize in meaningless and purposeless acts or you can utilize it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you utilize this energy, these 10 bars of energy in a positive way, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will get benefits of it multiplied by infinity. The benefit, the outcome of utilizing the energy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, putting efforts for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will give you benefits multiplied by infinity. But if you put your effort in the way of Satan, for the sake of Satan, then you're not getting anything. Or if you do it for people, if you try to get close to someone just because he is rich, just because he's from elite, just because uh, he can give you something is the, is in this dunya. Number one, you may or may not get it. You may or may not get that position. You may or may not get that money from him. But this is one thing is for sure. He's going to think less of you in his heart, even though he may not say it. But if you ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your status is increased. Your position is increased in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So put your efforts for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where you get benefits for unlimited time multiplied by infinity. There is no limit to it. And then Imam Hassan al-Askari says, I, my last will to you is that you should be truthful in your speech. Speaking the truth is very important. The person who does not speak the truth, a person who lies, commits a lot of other sins just because he's lying. Because the key to all of the sins is lying. That's why a person should always speak the truth in only two conditions one is allowed to lie number one if you have to do taqiyya and taqiyya is if your life is in danger or your wealth is in danger or your status your izzat is in danger in this case you are allowed to lie number two if there are two, two friends, two mu'mineen, who are fighting with each other, who are not talking to each other, then you're allowed to go to a brother and say, oh, this brother, you know, with whom you're not talking, he was saying this and this about you, he was praising you. He was not praising in actual actuality, but you're allowed to lie in this manner so that those two friends, those two mu'mineen become closer to each other. And we should do this because there are a lot of... Uh, People right now in this world, because of dunya, because of their materialistic needs, because of the materialistic love of materialism, people are getting away from each other. Mu'mineen are fighting with each other. And this is something that should be practiced a lot in this time and age. And then Imam says, And deliver what has been given in your care to whom you are supposed to deliver. Whether that person is pious or immoral person does not matter. Bir or fajr does not matter. If something has been given in your care and you are supposed to deliver that to that person, then it does not matter whether it's coming from someone who is kafir, someone who uh, is a non-Muslim, someone who is a Muslim, someone who is a mu'min, someone who is a muttaqi. It is wajib for you to deliver this to that person 
the imana should be given to the person you're supposed to give because these days when you are traveling to a place we see that a lot of uh, muslims a lot of mu'mineen who are acting lazy in delivering the imana the narration say that the, the the time when you reach to the place you should deliver it the first thing you should do is try to deliver the amana to the concerned person and at night even when you are sleeping before you sleep you should tell the other person the other people who are with you who are traveling with you or who are living with you that i have this amana with me this this these are the alama these are the signs of the amana and this belongs to this and that person Maybe I may not get up from this sleep. So before you sleep, you should tell, because this is on your neck. This is on you now. And it was wajib for you. It was obligatory for you to get this amana to that person. So before you sleep, you should tell this to trustworthy people that I have this amana with me. And uh, if uh, God forbid something happens to me, then you should go deliver this to that concerned person. And then Imam Hassan Askri says that uh, I, my last will to you is Dula Sujood, lengthen your sajda. You know, a person, when he adopts taqwa, a person, when he adopts vara, a person, when he gives amana to other person, other people, a person who speaks the truth, a person who puts effort, his efforts for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his energies for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he does all those things, ultimately when he prays, his sajda is tulani. He lengthens his sajda. This is the outcome he gets. Because out of all of the actions in this world that we do, Salat, namaz, prayers is the act that takes you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the dearest in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the act of Salat. And in the act of Salat, the position that is dearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that takes you closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the position of sajda. So the more you the more you lengthen your sajda, the more cl closer you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all tawfiq to act upon these nasiha, these uh, qualities, these uh, last uh, will uh, points of uh, Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.